The one change I would make is to put happiness right at the heart of how we lead our lives. Because I think we have a fundamental problem in our modern society. Um, you know, as we've become more and more obsessed with growing our economy and growing our incomes, we've, we've lost sight of the things that really make life happy and fulfilling. We've got our priorities all wrong. You see, over the last 60 years, as our economy has roughly trebled, and the material quality of our lives has improved immeasurably thanks to improvements in technology and medicine. But over that same period, and any measure of life satisfaction, of how well we feel our lives are going, we haven't got any happier. And that startling fact should be the starting point for all discussions about sort of human progress and, and how well we're doing. We've literally got richer, but no happier. And over that same period, we've seen a whole range of social issues and trends going in the wrong direction. So, for example, in terms of mental illness, one in four of us may now be struggling with anxiety and depression. The use of antidepressants has gone through the roof. Um, you know, too many of us are struggling in this world that is increasingly competitive, self-centred and, and pressurised. We've also seen a huge increase in income inequality over that same period. And we now know that that is linked to a whole range of social problems from high levels of crime through to lower levels of social mobility and um, you know, worse health outcomes. So that, that's not good either. And, and perhaps worse still, we've seen levels of trust completely deteriorate. In the 1960s, as many as 60% of us said that most other people can be trusted. But sadly, that number is now 30%. So trust has fallen apart as well. So, you know, in, in our pursuit of wealth and material prosperity, we've lost sight of the things that really matter. We are failing to deliver happy and fulfilling lives for people. So the solution to this is to, is to change our priorities. It's to put happiness and fulfilling lives uh, in the broadest sense back at the heart of the decisions we make. And that matters both in terms of our politics, but also in terms of deeply personal issues about how we each lead our own lives. And that's really where the organisation that I run comes in, Action for Happiness. It, what we want to see is a society where as many people as possible are able to live happy lives. And perhaps more importantly, we do everything we can to help people who are struggling with lives that are unhappy. Now, of course, that includes people who are deprived in material terms, but it also includes caring deeply about those millions of people who may appear to be doing fine externally, but actually deep down are struggling with severe emotional and psychological trauma because of the pressures of, of modern life. Now, I'm not saying for a moment that money doesn't matter. Of, of course it does. If you haven't got the money to, to pay for somewhere to live, to buy life's essentials, to pay the bills, and of course that's a, a surefire route to misery. But we know that once our basic needs are met, increasing our incomes, forever growing our wealth, that, you know, it does not not lead to, to, to significant increases in our happiness. There are many other things that are far more important. So, so the, let's look at the two different things then that need to happen. First of all, we need politics to be geared around this shift in priorities. And secondly, we need our individual lives to, to perhaps rebalance to reflect that as well. In terms of the politics, of course, government can't make us happy, but it does have a role in creating the conditions for us to lead happy lives. So that starts with measuring the things that matter most. You know, for too long, we've put all our focus on GDP, on financial measures of of progress. Um, but of course that fails to capture the things that are really important to us. And so it's really exciting that in the UK now and in a few other countries, politicians are starting to use alternative measures of well-being as well as wealth. Um, you know, and that's, that's the beginning of a really important journey and a more balanced view of what progress looks like for our societies. But that of course isn't enough. You can't just measure well-being. You need to design policies that improve people's well-being. So, for example, investing much more in helping people with mental health issues should be a priority for any government. Um, but, you know, this is a decade where hopefully we're going to be seeing politicians looking at decisions and saying, well, that may be good for growth, but actually it's not good for well-being, and therefore it's not the right thing to do. That's a whole new era that this, this whole idea would help lead into. But actually, more importantly, it's not just about political change. This is about personal change. It's about the way we each lead our lives. It's about recognising that changing society starts with each of us as individuals. And actually, we can make our own lives happier. There's a lot we can do to rebalance, to shift our focus, to perhaps put our relationships into more focus, to spend more time connecting with the people around us, contributing to our communities, living lives that are meaningful and purposeful. 
and, and, and perhaps letting go of some of that obsession with accumulation of, of stuff, of what we earn and what we own, which doesn't, you know, at the end of the day, matter nearly as much as we're told it does. Um, you know, and I've been through that kind of personal transformation a bit myself. So, you know, my background is a pretty typical one. I grew up in a small town in the West Midlands. You know, we were not poor, but we certainly weren't particularly well off. My mum's a teacher, my dad's an engineer, and I had a you know, really lucky, privileged childhood, loving family home, good friends, a lot of time outdoors, passionate about music and sport. I wasn't a particularly materialistic or, or sort of money-centric person when I was growing up. But somehow along that journey, my focus, because of the pressures I think of society, became much more materialistic. As I left university, I wanted to get a career, a job that paid really well. I wanted to um, you know, be successful. I wanted to um, you know, define my life by perhaps what I was able to earn and consume and, and the, the lifestyle I was able to lead. I worked for at least a decade in terms of uh, management consulting, helping basically rich, successful companies you know, earn more money. You know, it had pretty much limited social value. Um, I was pretty good at it, it paid fairly well, but ultimately left me miserable. Um, you know, I lost touch with some of my friends, my work-life balance was atrocious, and ultimately I ended up getting very physically ill, huge back pain problems because of the, ultimately the stress that my, my work was causing me. So I had a big shift in priorities, it led me to completely reevaluate my life. Um, you know, I've now spent the last six or seven years of my life working on sort of pro-social jobs, jobs that try and sort of make some kind of positive contribution. I earn much less than I used to, but I, am, you know, I see my kids every day, I have much better quality of life, and ultimately the sort of the happiness I get from doing something that I feel makes a contribution, however small, you know, it, 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 it gives me something that I never had in a, what you might call a conventionally successful career. So I think that's the kind of shift, and of course we're all individual, but it's that sort of recognition of what is it that's really important um, in life that we need to do both as leaders and politicians, but also as individuals. So that's my one change. It would be putting happiness at the heart of everything. What would that look like? Well, you know, let's, let's look at some of the, the challenges in society. Let's start in the home. So, you know, uh, you know, the way we raise our children is so important. UNICEF recently looked at the well-being of children right across the developed countries and it shockingly said that the UK was bottom, right at the bottom of the league table of child well-being. And, and the conclusion was that children are under this incredible sort of materialistic pressure and their parents tend to want to be buying them things to substitute for the time they don't spend with them. You know, a, a society with a focus on happiness would, would move us away from this idea that the best thing we can do for our kids is to earn and you know, work every hour God sends to provide for them materially and shift us to recognising that what they need is our love, our time, our affection. You know, it's the relationships and the connection we have with our kids that matters much more than what we can provide for them. So you know, a shift in the way we think about parenting is, is one thing. And then as our children move into school, I mean, our education system is now obsessed with exam results. We've got a kind of exam factory system here where you know, we are assessing schools on attainment, on behaviour on sort of churning out servants of the economy. But that's not what school should be about. It should be about equipping young people with the skills for life. You know, how, how, what is it I need to learn to be able to communicate effectively, to be in touch with my feelings, to bounce back and be resilient in the inevitable tough times in life? You know, these life skills are just as important as learning maths and learning languages. And we need an education system that puts well-being and happiness at the heart of what schooling is all about. And then we move into our working lives. And tragically, over 50% of people in the UK say they're unhappy at work. You know, we spend more than half of our working lives at work. So the fact that half of us are miserable there is just awful. Um, you know, not only is it bad for us as individuals, it's a huge missed opportunity. We know that companies that have workers that are engaged, motivated, happy, just are better places to be. People are sick less often, they're more productive, they're more creative, they're... You know, they, they have better customer service, they, they want to be there contributing more. So it's great for companies too. And actually what I think we're seeing is more people wanting jobs that are meaningful, recognising that perhaps it's less about the perks, the pay and the bonus, and more about what, what do I do and how does it contribute? How am I doing something that is useful and connects me with something bigger than myself? So that's our workplaces. What about our communities and the neighbourhoods we live in? Well, you know, we need to be seeing a shift back to a world where more and more of us say that 
most other people can be trusted. And that starts with us reconnecting in our neighbourhoods. You know, so a focus on happiness in our neighbourhoods is about getting to know the people we live in there, spending time connecting, even just saying hello and being aware of, of, of the people we're around and how we treat them and how little deeds we do, little acts of kindness really can make a difference. They can make us happier, they can make the people around us happier too. So actually we can contribute to building these communities by the sort of way we, we lead our lives. So there's political change, there's change in our homes, change in our schools, change in our working lives, but perhaps most of all change in our individual lives. More of us in a, in a happier world, in a world focused on putting the things that really matter first, we'll be just more comfortable with who we are, less bothered about the image we're trying to create, the, you know, showing how valued we are by what we earn and what we've got, and more able to say, this is me, I'm imperfect, um, you know, but I've, you know, I'm passionate about what I do, this is what I care about, these are the people I love, this is why what I do matters and, and contributes. And I think when more of us can say honestly and genuinely that we're happy and that we're fulfilled and that we're contributing, that's a better world. That's a world that's putting happiness at the heart of life instead of parking it behind some obsession with growing our wealth. So, so let's get away from chasing riches and start thinking about how we can live richer, happier lives. That's my one challenge.